It's Josh and Dolly again. We're back for Chem 11's Experiment 6. Metathesis reactions and equations. You'll be completing a ton of cool chemical reactions again, so this week gloves are mandatory, along with the usuals. Closed-toed shoes, long baggy pants, your snappy lab coat, and glasses or goggles. This week you'll first carry out and observe a bunch of aqueous reactions, and you'll get a ton of practice writing full and balanced chemical equations for each reaction. You'll find that applying solubility guidelines and chemical properties will be a huge help in completing these equations. Josh and I will demo three ionic metathesis reactions for you all today. All of these have a different driving force. The first reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid will form a non-electrolyte product. The second reaction will form a gas from ammonium chloride and sodium hydroxide. And the third demo involving cadmium chloride and sodium sulfide is a precipitation reaction that forms a solid or precipitate product. First up, sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid. All of your reactions today involve the same procedure. Just add 15 drops of each reagent in a clean test tube and mix. It doesn't matter which reagent goes first. We promise. You cannot mess up these reactions, so just relax and have fun. We decided to demonstrate this reaction first because it looks as though nothing happens. However, if you'll write out the molecular and ionic and net ionic equations, you'll see that the formation of water, a non-electrolyte, is the driving force of this reaction. Thus, do not write no reaction in your observations for this reaction. Something did happen. If you wrap your hand tightly around the test tube as you add the second reagent, you'll notice the tube heats up. That's because this is an exothermic neutralization reaction. Notice that in the net ionic equation, the starting materials are charged, but the product is neutral. Our next demo will be the reaction between ammonium chloride and NaOH. First, add 15 drops of ammonium chloride. Now add 15 drops of sodium hydroxide. Again, it seems that no reaction has occurred, but let's think about what's really going on. Writing out the molecular, ionic, and net equations for ammonium chloride reacting with sodium hydroxide shows the formation of ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. And just like last week, this product decomposes readily in solution to form water and ammonia gas. The formation of ammonia gas in solution is what drives the reaction since it's effectively removing the product from the solution. It is tricky because the gas does stay in solution, but trust me, it's there. Our last demo is the precipitation reaction between cadmium chloride and sodium sulfide. Look at how the tube becomes cloudy as we add the second reagent. This is the formation of the precipitate or solid product. So what compound is that product? Once again, writing out the molecular, ionic, and net ionic equations for cadmium chloride reacting with sodium sulfide shows the formation of solid cadmium sulfide, CDS. Again, it is the formation of this product solid that drives the reaction, since again, it's removing the product from the aqueous ion still in solution. How were we able to predict all the products for all these reactions? Oh, I know, by writing out all those molecular, ionic, and net ionic reactions. We'll demonstrate this now fully for you for our third reaction, cadmium chloride with sodium sulfide. First, you need to recall naming for ionic compounds. The first word is the cation, and the second word is the anion. You will also need to know the charge of each ion so as to write neutral compounds. Next, you need to write out the principal species in solution, or the ions that are present when the starting materials are dissolved in water. Strong electrolytes are present in dissociated cationic and anionic forms, while weak electrolytes remain associated in solution. And subscripts refer to relative numbers of ions now, so they become coefficients. When the ions of the starting materials trade places with each other, consider the possible products, or simply analyze all the ions in solution and see whether or not any of them could combine to form a solid. What do you find? Your solubility guidelines are key in this step. If you refer to table 6-1 in your manual, you'll see that sulfides are insoluble, excluding those of group 1 cations. This is why cadmium sulfide, 
or CDS, is formed as the solid product. After determining your proposed products, go back and finish writing out your molecular and ionic equations. We like to write out the ionic equation before the molecular. Remember that in the ionic equation, all aqueous soluble ions remain dissociated, but our product remains associated since it's a solid. Also remember that your reaction needs to be balanced. Finally, when writing the molecular equation, don't forget to balance the atoms again and to be sure to write neutral compounds. Now if you look closely at the ionic equation slide, you'll see that some ions are present on both the starting material side and the product side. These ions are known as the spectator ions and do not contribute to the product formation. Thus you can just cross these ions out, and what you're left with is the net ionic equation, the only ions involved that drive the reaction to completion. To more quickly execute the experiment, do not perform the reactions in the order listed on your data report sheet. Instead, skip around based on what starting materials are available. Otherwise, everyone will be waiting to use the same bottles each time. We suggest performing all of the reactions first and writing down all the observations and then writing out your equations. If you later find that a reaction didn't proceed as you would have expected, then go ahead and repeat it. Again, have fun! You're doing so much cool chemistry today! Woo!